Welcome to another analysis video, everyone, and this time we're going to look at the Hollywood classic Rebel Without a Cause. As usual, this analysis does include an in-depth discussion of the film and its characters and its plot, so spoilers are to be expected. Coming out in the 1950s, Rebel Without a Cause is often cited as one of the precursor coming-of-age films. The 50s was a time the idea of a teenager was a whole new identity, one that was about the transition between childhood and adulthood. And with this new sense of identity, there are representations through culture to attempt to understand and convey what this is. There is so much to talk about with this film, so the focus of this analysis will be on the themes of sexuality and adolescence. Looking at teen representations, let's start with talking about our protagonist Jim, played by the young and brilliant James Dean. We are introduced to Jim wandering through town at night, clearly drunk. He falls to the ground and sees a toy that he begins playing with. He finds it amusing as he plays with it for a moment before he is soon picked up by the police. Already this opening describes quite well who this character is as we get to know him by the end of the film. An aimless wanderer looking for something to do, trying to find some sort of purpose. More noticeably I think it comments on the childishness and the immaturity still in him as he giggles and later makes noise at the police station. Jim's parents pick him up having just been at a social event dressed in their finest evening wear already quickly indicating his family is middle class. <laughs> it is then we learn Jim and his parents don't get along with a lack of understanding. At the station, we are also introduced to Judy, played by Natalie Wood. Around the same age, Judy was brought in for running away from home, where she feels her father doesn't approve of how she acts and dresses. Then we have our third character, Plato, who we will discuss in depth later on. He was sent in for shooting a litter of puppies with his mother's gun, who he never sees. His father had abandoned the family and Plato has had mental health issues in the past, but more on that later. What then does the film serve to tell us about teenagers? We have all three of these characters in the police station, each with individual issues, but they have similar goals of wanting to be understood and to feel like they have a place in the world. The film serves to show us a more violent youth when Jim is forced into a knife fight by a gang at the school. Jim wants nothing to do with them at first until he is called chicken. This is when the themes of masculinity also come into play, as it is here he is threatened by this. The fight is soon broken up, but later on, Jim decides to join them in a game involving driving their cars as close to a cliff as possible, the loser being whoever stops first. What I think Ray is showing us here is the youth that desires to do something dangerous just out of their boredom. The scene escalates to the death of one of the gang members, which really shows the consequence of such extreme behaviour. So overall, you can see it's just young people wanting to get up to no good just because they're trying to make their own fun and they can't think of anything else they want to do. So they do something like this. It's almost like acting out. Returning to Jim then, masculinity plays a large part of the film and definitely ties in with these themes of teenhood. The reason his reaction to being called chicken is so interesting is when we look at his father. In many scenes we see his mother taking control of everything, with the father just agreeing and following her orders. The most significant scene of course is this. Jim returns home, and even the way the scene is shot perfectly conveys emasculation. The father is wearing his feminine apron, and the camera is behind the stair banister that almost forms prison bars. On the floor is a tray of food that is spilled everywhere that was for the mother. The father says to Jim he better clean it up before his mother sees it. Jim gently pulls his father up by the straps of the apron and tries to speak, but can't. It is a monumental piece of acting. The kind of stuttering and murmuring we see here is never usually seen in classic Hollywood acting, with Marlon Brando as one exception. What is articulated though in this scene, and the choice to play it this way, is it conveys the frustration that Jim feels, and that inability to speak, which also adds to how Jim is out of touch with his parents, and just doesn't know how to convey his feelings, which again ties into those themes of adolescence. This scene further creates opposing forces of masculinity when they continue to talk in Jim's room. Jim takes his shirt off, revealing his young and strong body. Meanwhile, the father, older, out of shape, and still wearing the feminine apron. Jim, of course, wants his dad to be masculine, and he wants something to look up to. Another key scene that we see the ideas of masculinity in adolescence in play is when Jim, his mother, and father argue on the stairway. Jim is stuck in the middle, the mother is literally on a higher level, and the father is again emasculated, sitting at the bottom. Jim begs his father to do something, defend him, and to stand up for himself but he continues to cower. This relationship shows that Jim is disappointed with the lack of masculinity in his father, someone who is supposed to be the man of the house and a role model of strength for Jim. And of course I mean this in a classic 50s America sense. 
This can then bring us to some of the underlying themes of sexuality that are also present. Which now brings us to who I think is one of the most intricate and complex characters in the film, Plato. As we learn, his father abandoned the family, his mother is never at home, and he has had mental health problems in the past because of this. He is mostly cared for by the housekeeper. Firstly, let's question his sexuality. The question being, is he a homosexual? Well, let's take a look at a few things that might suggest this. His taking the gym is striking, and within knowing him a day, he considers him as a best friend. Then there's a scene later when he asks him to come back to his house where they could be alone. In his school locker, unlike many boys who might have had a pen of a woman, he has the face of a handsome man. Plato's mannerisms and way of speech also indicate a level of femininity. Now I think there is a great level of small details that suggest he is definitely a homosexual, but the other thing to consider is the psychological state, which I think comes to light in this scene. Jim, Plato and Judy are all together and it is the only time they are all at peace in the film, having fun. <laughs> Running around, they come together and it almost seems like a strange family unit with Plato as the child as Judy sings him to sleep motherly. The gang comes around, waking Plato, but his concern is that Jim has left him, shouting, you abandoned me. Then there's another piece of dialogue when he literally says, you're not my father. After this line, it is definite that Plato has abandonment issues and sees Jim as a father figure in the absence of his own. Looking at it this way makes you reevaluate how you may have perceived him as solely just a character sexually interested in Jim. Rebel Without a Cause is ultimately a melting pot of representations and works as a commentary of middle class America and an attempt to understand the new teenage psyche. It's just the age when nothing fits. I think it is a film way ahead of its time, and while not perfect, it does have its intricacies and manages to hold a level of human truth and understanding. The coming of age genre as we know it today is full of stereotypes and characters complaining about situations that aren't remotely sympathetic, but many still question the human condition in the place of adolescence as a time of trying to absorb and make sense of the world. Rebel Without a Cause manages to do this, even if the acting fits the classical Hollywood melodrama and is easily one of the best films in the coming of age category. I of course only scratched the surface of the film, so I would love to hear your thoughts below about things I didn't discuss, whether it's just stylistically or about the characters. Thank you so much everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed the analysis, please drop your thoughts below and stay tuned for future uploads. I'll see you next time.